Hello everybody, my name is Manita. This is my beautiful girl Luna. And we thought we would make a YouTube channel about all of the things that I love about dogs, houseplants, and maybe if anybody is interested, some things about pain management. Today I wanted to make a video about how to raise a puppy during COVID. So we got Luna last year in June, she's now 18 months, and we went into a heavy lockdown here in Melbourne, Victoria. And from what we've been doing over the last year and a half, Luna's turned into a really, really amazing dog. So I thought I would just share for everybody who is getting a puppy or considering getting a puppy, some of the things that you need to do even if you are still in lockdown and there's restrictions in place, things to do that will help to set your puppy up to succeed rather than fail. I find that there's a lot of people who are getting dogs and not realizing that it's hard work to raise a dog, especially if you wanna have a dog that listens to you in all situations and you can bring to a cafe and not worry about and that is happy to be around all sorts of people and kids and environments so yeah here are my top tips for raising a puppy during covid the number one tip is socialization so we missed out on puppy school and I was planning on using puppy school just as a way of getting Luna socialized. So instead what I did was reached out to one of my girlfriends who also has a Staffy. She's a lot older, but she's well socialized and uh, we made sure that she was fully vaccinated so that it was safe for this one. And what I did was I borrowed her a couple times a week brought her over to my house and just let them hang out together for a couple hours. Especially while your puppy is unvaccinated, it's really important to keep them away from environments that you're not in control of. So definitely avoid dog parks, parks in general, where you don't know uh, what kind of dogs have been in that area and expose them to all sorts of diseases that you could much easily avoid. So getting a group of friends together uh, with friendly and vaccinated dogs in your backyard, in their backyard, is um, a good way of doing that. Tip number two is always have treats and toys. So as you can see, I am holding a treat and Luna is very, very attentive because she won't that. <laughs> Reason being is when you've got something that your dog is obsessed with, chances are you're able to train them and get them to listen and behave much more easily. And as puppies, you need a lot in order to control them because they can be terrors. Yeah, so find something that your dog is obsessed with. If they're food orientated, treats. If they're toy orientated, a tug toy, a ball, whatever works and use that to your advantage in all situations. Number three is trick training. So uh, in Melbourne here, the weather is really unpredictable and sometimes we can't get out and go for a walk. So what we do instead to mentally stimulate Luna is trick train. We don't do it as much now because she's pretty calm, but as a puppy, I found it really useful just to do short training sessions of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, every couple hours, and it just conked her out. So that's another way that you can uh, get your puppy to calm down and not be such a terror in the house. Also, while they're puppies, you wanna make sure that you're not over-exercising them and putting undue pressure on their growing joints. So that is another way that you can get them stimulated in a safe way. Number four is giving them alone time. This one is probably the biggest one. 
especially for people who work from home and people who spend a lot of time at home in general. So if you were like myself and uh, weren't able to work during COVID lockdowns, your puppy is going to love it, but they're also going to get really used to you being home. So when things open up and you start to leave them at home, if they're not used to that already, you're going to have a dog with separation anxiety. Case in point, this was something that I didn't do while she was a pup and we really struggled when things opened up in November last year and we're probably going to be uh, struggling a little bit to adjust her back to being alone when I start back at work next week. Yeah, definitely learn from my mistakes. If you can get it under control while they're a baby, your life will be much easier. We really struggled even just going to the shops for five, 10 minutes because Luna would dig at our front door to try and get out she would bark and she would howl and it was just heartbreaking to see on the cameras. Also, if, if you're not lucky to have good neighbours that understand, that can put pressure on the relationship that you have with the people that live so close to you. Yep, yeah, so give them alone time. Number five is always have long lasting treats in the house. And this is going to help with the teething phase of puppies. So I, I see a lot on Facebook forums and um, just the internet in general, dogs that destroy couches and their beds and their owner's beds and just generally things around the house. We managed to avoid all of that. Thankfully, we've still got everything intact because I always made sure that, that I had long lasting chews in the house. So. Avoid things like pig's ears and rawhide treats because they can be a choking hazard. In my opinion, it's better to spend a little bit more money on these kinds of treats because it's safer and they really do last longer. From my experience, pig's ears can last with a staffy a minute, whereas something like an antler will last you weeks and you can leave it with them and not have to worry about them potentially choking and dying while you're not supervising them. Yeah, so always have long lasting treats around the house. Number six is expose them to as many everyday things as possible. So even just around the house, things like the vacuum cleaner being on, when you're mopping the house, the jangling of your keys, and then bring them out to environments where they can meet strangers, but get them to sit or lay down next to you and just feed them treats, pat them, say good girl, good boy. Uh, and that just reinforces to them that they have to be calm in those situations because the last thing you want is to attempt to take your dog out to a busy area and have them try and run up to everybody and jump on people and especially kids you want you want to trust that your dog is not going to do anything especially with bigger dogs but really all dog owners regardless of the size or the breed should be doing these things and number seven is set boundaries and this is more or less in the earlier stages of having a puppy but you don't want them to have free reign of every room and every piece of furniture in the house because you may encounter someone who comes to your house who doesn't like being walked all over when they're sitting on the couch so um, getting them to sit or lay down in their bed and stay um, is a really good thing to uh, work on also you can crate train your dog to be happy to chill out in a crate we can go into that a little bit further in another video. I'm a huge advocate for crate training. I think it's it's really helped us control our crazy beast. Um, yeah, so those are seven tips that I would give to any new puppy owner during this time and for anybody who is considering getting a puppy. It is hard work, 
Uh, please do not think that getting a puppy is going to be easy because they really are just like children. Yeah, I think that's it for me. So thank you for watching if you got to the end of this video. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them in the comments below or I can even make some more videos about how I've trained Luna to be as cool and chill as she is. And yeah, all right, I'm gonna go, bye.